Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with Music and the Truth Until Dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> Yeah, welcome everybody. Well, at least uh, Jason out there. So uh, this is another two-way workshop. We do these every Tuesday and every Saturday, and it's an effort to have an open forum, a place where people can uh, get together and um, collaborate and network and uh, ask questions, answer questions, uh, talk about areas that they're familiar with or something they've experienced. Uh, focused on Second Amendment awareness and to a media. So uh, these shows can sometimes start off slow if no one's in here and no one is in here. So uh, it's not scripted. There's no topics. Well, there's no topic today at least. And uh, for some reason, i got a bunch of flies flying around that are distracting me. But we'll uh, probably dig into a podcast. I uh, have asked a couple of different podcasters out there that I'm fans of who do interesting interviews, uh, pretty much interview type shows. They talk to Second Amendment activists and um, people in the industry. So uh, they've given us the okay to play their podcast and I start the show off that way, which I've done plenty of times until uh, people show up. So we've got links out there to, I think it was 45 people today, uh, 42 and three. So. Uh, Hopefully somebody will show up and we can talk about, I told them the topic would be what we can do in 19 to get ready for 2020. I think that's uh, an issue we should probably be focusing more and more on. It looks more on. Hmm, maybe I'm a moron. Looks like we've got just a few months left until it's 2020 and even fewer months left until they go really in depth into the political and the uh, election year stuff. So I think it's past time for uh, learning how to play, and now it's time to start playing our instruments. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to be working on one of my projects, which is um, the Minuteman University. It's what we call this chat, and it is a website. It was born at the kitchen table. No, maybe is I don't know what that would be. I'm, I'm going to call it this kitchen table at uh, Charles Heller's house. Uh, where he does his CCW classes, actually. And uh, as a person who's trying to help out the Arizona Citizens Defense League here in Arizona, I was over at Charles' house, and we were uh, talking about a project that AZCDL was working on at the time. And as one of the I don't know, spitballing ideas out there, we came up with this idea of a Minuteman University, an educational project that would allow people to get some of the tools to learn how to use their phones, their computers, their social media platforms, um, and then the various levels of whatever you want to call like layers to that. Once you start creating content, there's issues with managing content and distribu distributing content. And some of these things happen at different speeds for different people and people are interested more in different aspects of it. So we thought having an educational place or a place to archive stuff like that would be a useful thing. Well, the Arizona Citizens Defense League never really went forward with that and after about a year of just sitting on it, I decided to start working on it a bit. And that's what I'm going to work on this afternoon. Update on bump slide fire stocks. Well, this is a 2A media workshop, so this is uh, not some kind of political thing. I'm not going to be researching political stuff, but if you want to post an update, go ahead. I'm not here to entertain anybody. Uh, I'm here to have uh, a forum every Tuesday and every Saturday for anybody who's in the media who wants to learn how to hone their skills. So if you think that every time we talk, we have to talk about what the media tells us to talk about, or today I guess you're talking about it because people on them are felons, then... Uh, that's fine, but we're not talking about that right now. Uh, this isn't just a chat. This is supposed to be a way for people to hone their skills. So uh, 
I'm going to turn on a podcast, and more than likely that podcast will have nothing to do with the bump stock thing either. But I hope that uh, by naming it 2A Media Workshop every Sunday and Tuesday, join in and grow your 2A project. It wasn't too misleading. All right, I think I'm going to go over to Gun Freedom Radio, see who they've got going on here. They're coming in. Originally aired 216. Oh, they're on vacation. Hmm. Double tap a shot show. Nah, I'm going to go see what James Cleta's got on the sketch. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go check out Riding Shotgun with Charlie. We haven't listened to Charlie in a while, and he's over on the Gun Streamer. So we're going to go over to Gun Streamer. We're going to grab a Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Do do do. I guess I'm going to switch this over to live, and we'll see that nobody's chatting still. There are 12 people watching. Five people are participating in the platform by clicking on the thumb. So I don't care if you do or not for this channel, but I do care if you do or not in general. And in general, if you don't do anything when you watch the Internet, you might as well go watch TV or listen to the radio because you're not doing much except fill in the pockets of big Google. But uh, you're going to be in the stream anyway. You might as well influence the, the current. So uh, use those thumbs. If you're not going to use them here, I have no faith that you're using them as well, so I'm going to have to keep bitching about it. If you don't want to be bitched at about that kind of shit, then I have an obvious solution for that for you. Let's see if we can find Charlie right now. I guess I'll just go to the first channel. There was a way to search, so I'll just search the other window. Here we go. Got eight subscribers, so we'll drop a link over there. Encourage people to subscribe to Riding Shotgun with Charlie, which is an awesome podcast, neat format. Now says he's listening while he's driving home. I don't know if I sent you a link. If you want a link, let me know. Um, and then we'll uh, look through here. So since people are listening, I'll read off some of the videos that Charlie's got over here. The more recent ones are Anthony Calandro, Tactical Pens. We got some guy hunting, being police. We got Dee Dee Edmondson. We got Brian Aitken. Ken Blanchard which was his, that that was not his first, but it was close to being one of his first, and now he's gone back for 21. Um, Paul Lathrop, that is Light Society. Aaron from Pink Pistols. Jeff Zimba. Oh, I watched that one already. I'm not going to watch that one again. Uh, and then Marcus Allen. So why don't we go with Ken Blanchard. It's always good. Unless somebody wanted to say something else out there. No, nope, let me say nothing. So we're getting some Ken Blanchard, and I will be working on another project over here until somebody jumps in to join us. Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach, when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook, and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Writing Shotgun with Charlie. This is this is like a round trip episode because we are back in DC and we once again have the Reverend Ken Blanchard, the black man with a gun, the pastor of Patriots, Paladins, and Pistoleros. Ken, thanks for being on again. Yeah, thank you for having me. On. I, I really appreciate it, dude. This is this is the last time we got together, it was a lot of fun, and we got to see some sights around DC, and we're back in DC, so I'm gonna pull a U-turn. Is that illegal? Yeah, withdraw right. All right, don't tell me. 
Uh, as long as you don't get caught, it's, it's okay. This little part where we're here right here? Yeah. Is where a lot of uh, government people play softball. Government people play softball? Yeah, that's the government. Is that, um, people that you wouldn't think normally would play. You know, you actually find spies playing. You know. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like to play all the <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice. So last time, we, we, we talked about a lot of stuff last time. We talked about how you got started. We talked about how you got an education after you joined the NRA and started hanging out with the NRA guys. And we talked about how you got into podcasting and we talked about how you got into music. So we, we covered a wide variety of stuff, which is pretty cool. Let me ask you this. How do you keep a good attitude about things when when things are tough? Because I know I've seen some of your posts recently with, with all the mass shootings that we've had going on. And you've seen you've seen down the dumps. I know I've heard you on your podcast sometimes. You sound like you're down about things too. We're shooters. And it's always nice that you, you get on and you tell people that they need to um Oh my gosh, what's your phrase? That you started a podcast like? Oh, you survived another You week. survived another week. That's it. You survived another week. So but sometimes I hear in your voice that you don't survive. Not that you're not surviving, but it's it's survival. <laughs> I tried I tried things. I thought, live by my own creed. Do who you are. People will know when you put them on. So there's trouble in the land. There are people killing for no reason at all. There's, there's murder and mayhem, and we're being accused of we're being falsely blamed and put aside of the same stuff. And I know my community, my community is great. So the folks that can actually borrow a couple of sugar brown or a lawnmower or, or something happens, you guys are the folks that I will send my kids over to if I couldn't do anything. But knowing all of that, I know you also are weary, hurt, and tired. So for me to be all, hey, bubbly and cheery, it not necessarily be real. So I'm going to put it right where it's at, and together we're going to be somewhere by the end of the show. That's my goal, anyway. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, it's always it's always inspiring to hear you, even when, uh, even not even when you're down, but it's not good to hear you down, but it certainly helps us hear you be real. And and it's comforting to hear your voice. That's, a, that's the other part. The negative side is because sometimes I don't have something positive to say. I I can't say it. So my show will be late. This should come out every Friday and then like this is like four days later on Tuesday the thing pops up. And I know I probably lost some people who are waiting for my show. But I'm honestly struggling trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel, trying to make sure that um, if you're hanging on a bridge and you're thinking about jumping off, my voice is not going to be the one to push you off. It's going to be the one to pull you back. Yeah, and it's going to be the knot that makes you hang on. I purposely pray on that thing, sit on that thing, talk to myself, um, meditate on it, and go, all right, where can I go from here? And sometimes I'm just crying. I'm, I've had emotional times on my on my show where you, know, you can edit out because you don't hear me blubbering, but... Something will happen, and it's literally this last two months, we've had police shootings, we've had race riots almost, we've had the threat of it. Um, if you look at Facebook, you thought we were just gone down the tube. Oh my gosh, people are just so much hate, so much destruction, and I took all that in. I took all in as a pastor. Uh, one of the things that happens, I remember I'm a big Star Trek fan, and one of the new characters on Captain Picard's ship in different generation is the, the Betazoid, uh, Councilor Troy, that had sent people's feeling. I have that. I am very empathetic. And if you are in a bad light, I feel it. And when my nation, my community is sad, I'm hurting too. So, sure. one thing is comfort. How can I get you legitimately from zero to five? Get you out of here so that you're okay. And sometimes, I can't tell whether I did a good job or not. Every month later, I get a call. I've had this happen quite a few times. Yeah. Where somebody said, dude, I was on the bridge for it. Or I had a guy come out. Yep. That's. And I'll be, I'm, I'm crying now. I'm, I'm, I'm blubbering because that's way over my pay grade. I mean, it's just, you don't think that you're doing anything. You're down in the basement. You're just talking. <laughs> right. Next to the laundry. Yeah, man. And <laughs> you're grumpy because your wife still clean the stuff. It's like, it's coming through the microphone where you stop it, please. <laughs> and now somebody says, dude, you help save me. That's cool. It's uh it's de 
I don't want to say it's depressing to me, but I uh, one of these things that I do on my Facebook page every day is I put in uh, the three things that I'm grateful for. And a friend of mine started doing it, and I was like, it seems ridiculous. But I'm like, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to do it for a week. You know, I'll do it for two weeks. I'm going to do it for a month. And I think I've been doing it for a year and a half, and I've had a lot of people... A lot of people have said, you know what, it's it's great to hear these, it's inspiring, it's, you know, they, they look forward to reading what my, my grateful things are. And, it, and believe me, it's minutiae. It's like opening up a jar of peanut butter and being, the, like, getting into the jar of peanut butter for the first time. Um, it's 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 nothing big, but it's all those little things that just keep us going. Because there are so many negatives. Um, by the time you open your eyes, by the time you go to sleep, you're being sold to, you're, you're being shared with all the negative stuff that's happening in the world. And that stuff takes some stuff away from you. Oh, it does. So you need somebody to import some positive stuff. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's cool that you can do that on your podcast. And like we talked about before, you've been podcasting for a long time. Did, uh, you actually spoke at some of the like the new media. Yeah, that's the cool part. The, um, back in. I told you this was a big score for me. I'm telling you, this guy's talked to everybody. I'm just I'm riding around my car making videos and me talking to my kids. Next thing I know, I get Ken Blanchard with me. Oh my God! There, there's um, because I've been podcasting and such a, a podcast now. Learning from all the greats that's doing stuff. Um, we have the uh, Holocaust Museum right here, right? And the uh, U.S. Museum as well. Go ahead and do the expo and quite a few uh, media events for, for the last past years, and I'm. I used to be the, like the young guy or the old guy, but now this podcast is blowing up. People who were getting kicked out of radio have finally seen the light. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of old, traditional newscasters, pod, uh, broadcasters. I started on a channel, so podcasting is another avenue in there. And one time I thought it was going to replace radio, but, but not. It's just another thing. Um, it is. I, I love podcasts, man. I listen to, I listen to a bunch of stuff. I, I've been listening to you for a long time. I listen to uh, the Dr. Hire podcast. I listen to Dave Ramsey, who's a financial guy. I listen to Hal Elrod, who's a uh, motivational guy. I listen to Michael Hyatt, who's a motivational guy. Um, I listen. It, it replaced the radio for me. I don't listen to the radio. I'm, I'm really tired of hearing the same 14 pop songs being played over and over and over. Yeah. I want to say voice on every channel. Like, yeah. Everything's syndicated now. So. There's so many times I'm riding in the car when my daughter likes to, she pretends to the the cars in nightclub, you know, she puts some music on, she's dancing around the whole time in the car, and then daughters are great. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> so she'll want one station, then she'll change the station, she'll change another station. I'm like, do we just hear the songs? No, that's a different song. Then we, hear, I, I swear, we heard this. No, it's a different song. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same song. So um, podcasting is a great, a great avenue for that, and you've been doing it for a long time. A lot of people and love to share your, your your thoughts, and some people don't realize how far that goes. Sometimes the stuff comes right from my heart. Yeah. No filter. Well, the negative thing. Some people say crazy stuff. Yeah. They hurt people so much. You want to be real careful when you take stuff from the inside to the out. Right. You want to have some responsibility. I know this. I've been teaching teaching gun safety classes for a long time, and I've I've taken a weird approach, I guess, to, to doing the classes. I don't want to say it's a weird approach, but the way I see things is I've got I've got what I know and what I need to teach and what I need to cover. And every class I do, even though I cover the same material, every class is a little bit different. So I've taken this attitude that it's very much like it's like jazz improv. Yeah. Like we can play the same song, the solo's gonna be different. Riff it, man, riff it. And yeah, and if somebody wants to talk more about um you know, keeping them done safe in the house from the kids, or if somebody wants to talk more about lethal force, or if somebody breaks into the house, like um, you know, how do uh, I go, I, I take that route. Yeah, there you go. I take that route. And like I said, and, and I'm, I feel after I do a class, I feel like I'm bearing my soul for these people. Yeah. And it's going to be the same way. You're in your basement. You're bearing your soul for everybody. And people pick up on it. They hear you, and they know you. When you said, I want to come to D.C., I thought, I've never met this guy for this day in my life, but he listened to me for years. So he knows me. Yeah. That's a trust right thing. Just get. <laughs> he got real to don't listen to you. <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. Um. Yeah, that was. I got it. This whole thing was. I want to say it was kind of weird, but I, I had this idea for this, interview program that we're doing here, and, and I'm like, who can I get? Who can I get? Maybe I can get Ken Blanchard. He might be crazy enough to do this. And I, I was totally impressed that uh, I sent you an email two, two hours later. You're like, oh man, let's do it. 
I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe this is you. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I brought into this, this past Department of Agriculture, Department nice. of Energy, Department of Transportation. We had uh, Smithsonian and Air and Space on our left. Cool. And uh, we take a uh, right, right by. Take a right right here. Yeah, the next <laughs> one.
the, what's the word? When you're the dialogue, he's a really good dialogue speaker. So I would say my two characters are now at a mall, and I would paint the whole picture, and he would add the conversation, what they see, how they're talking. Oh, wow. So we worked like great together. And um, then I wanted to do the Orson Welles thing and narrate because why not? It was my show. Right. It's, it's so, your show. Why well, are you going to pay somebody else to do it? So I'm having a blast, and we're making it like a whodunit. Cliffhanger every week, um, old old school stuff, and then the story got stranger and stranger. But I was still having a good time, so we did a thing for 200 episodes. Wow! Of their shooter, um, and then Derek decided to. He goes, man, that stuff is still out there. Can I pull it? I said, yeah. You're a co-writer, so take everything. Right. So, so it's still available on his website. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. So you got to change medias. I know that you've got to you've got to find your niche. Is really what it comes down to, and I. One of the things that I've noticed as a gun instructor is I, I, I feel like every class that I do, I, I bear my soul for, even though I cover the material. What makes me a little bit different from other gun instructors are the stories that I tell and, and the way that I can relate to people and the things that they take away when they take, take class with me. And I, I wanted to be a rock star when I was a kid. I wanted to be a rock star when I was an adult. So so I still want, I still want that, and I've still got that, and I take... I take every class. It's still it's still part of a show for me. It's like I've got to go out and entertain people and keep them awake and keep them interested. And my hope is to convert. No, uh, I call them non-gun folks. I say we have three types of people. We have the uh, we have the pro-gun people, the pro 2 a people. We have the non-gun folk, and we have the anti-gun wackos. And my deal is to turn people into pro-gun people. So if if I can take somebody that's not a gun person and convert them to wanting to have a gun or at least being cooler with it, then, then I consider that a win. And and I'll, there are some things that, you know, like I said, I don't have a military background. I don't have a law enforcement background. I'm not a police officer. There are some things that kind of turn me off that I see guys do. And when I see something that's all camouflage, it makes me think that that guy just wants people that are hunters. Or if I see things that are in, like, the military stencil, that makes me say, mm, you know what, that guy probably wants to, to build an army and, and it's not its not that there's anything wrong with that. I know when I see that sort of stuff, it's just not for me. What we have is there are like a gazillion veterans. Everybody came home with the same idea. I am a combat veteran, so I'm going to teach tactical. And we have so many tactical TEDs out there. And um, that is for one audience. But there are also women that shoot, and people that are disabled or have hearing All that. Everybody has other avenues they can talk to. There are people who don't like the tone of my voice. There are those who do. Uh, and I had to learn that to be strong in your, let's say, story. Stay strong in your history. Stay strong in what, what you're true to. What's, what's cool about this whole media thing is hey, we Tony. our own channels and people find us because they didn't think they were. What's up? Yeah, nothing just been watching. Uh... Ken and Charlie chatting here. Yeah, the Rev. Yeah, that dude has been at it for a long time. Since like 1990. He's been doing this two way thing. He was one of the first ones on Charlie's. And then this is a recent one from, uh, where's the date? From March. So it was a pretty recent one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's happening in Jersey? Oh, <laughs> all right. One, one, I have the high going that, you know, I came out to the event, uh, you know, just to be another protester and take some pics and, you know, post up on the interwebs. And then they told me that some people canceled because they thought it was too Trump, too pro-Trump and asked me to be a speaker. Show would... 10 minutes notice <laughs> i actually did i don't know maybe three three minute speech oh. didn't do didn't do badly um and just walked through the crowd and thanked everybody for being there and dude <laughs> i mean you know i do the podcast and and I, and I say over and over and over again we have to participate you can't stay at home you can't sit on your ass and call yourself an activist because you own a gun and post a meme. So that's pretty much the direction I went with my speech. And then I got a little excited and 
scream, you people suck to all the politicians that were staring at us from their windows. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, so you're saying that everybody showed up, but then they told you all to leave because it was too political instead of being uh, uh, on a position. Well, Oh, no, actually what happened was, no, the regular people showed up, you know, we did our speeches and stuff, but some of the speakers that were to show up that said they were coming canceled because they said it was, uh, they thought it would be too pro-Trump, so they didn't want to speak at the event. Oh, okay, now I understand. So there was gaps in the schedule or whatever. Yeah, that they had to fill. Okay. And, okay. and I'm like, dude, it can be as pro Trump. No one said anything bad. I mean, I didn't. One of the guys stood up and was complaining about this new thing where they're trying to push LBG, the lesbian and gay thing, in, in schools. They're going to be somehow telling kids what that is. I don't really know. But a lot of people were upset that about that and i'm like i don't care if some kid won't commit suicide because he won't think he's the only person like him you know what i mean like like that doesn't bother me now if you're pushing a lifestyle on children what's pushing i mean if you tell a kid he's all right because you know he likes to dress up like a girl or he's a feminine or he doesn't like girls dude, kids kill themselves a lot at that age over that but flip side, are you pushing an agenda? That's what bothers me. How's this? Teach them to read, dude. <laughs> Stop with the rest of it. Yeah. Well, I guess that's where it gets in, in, into the weeds, right? When it, what's the topics of the books? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't have kids to watch go through the schools or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I just heard somebody the other day focusing on some interpretation of the Second Amendment, but you know, my question is, is that pervasive? Is that what most kids are seeing when the Second Amendment topic comes up? Or is that, you know, a highly on extreme? Or is it a complete troll? Like somebody just completely made that up to be funny or sarcastic, uh-huh. ironic or something. And then people don't understand and it starts to go around and, you know. Exactly. And, and that's something I'm like, if I don't read into it, mostly I try to avoid it. Because then all of a sudden, all communication is manipulation. Now someone's playing you. You know? Because you only took their word. Yeah, at least I don't try to... uh, I mean, I try to keep it on two-way just because there's too many of those and you need to give them a little bit of due diligence, right? Yep. To figure out what's, what's, what's up. But like I say, when they don't apply, it's easy for me to let somebody else take that one. <laughs> and then this thing with, and then the, it's not fake news, it's unimportant stuff like Jesse Mullet in Chicago. The guy with the, you know, fake story about the mega hats and I was kidnapped or somebody tried to hang me and attack me and beat me up. All right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, how that wasn't much of a story when it happened in my world. And I don't care about it now. I think Maj Torre had one of the best, he said, as far as Second Amendment guys, he said, what we should have done immediately is just pushed, that's why everybody, the Second Amendment is for everyone, and you should be able to fight someone that attacks you, you know, and if your story comes out as being a lie, it makes no difference, you already made an inroad with your argument about using a firearm for self-protection, I was like, I see where he's coming from there. Well, since this is a workshop, let me ask, what did you bring to the event as far as cameras and gear? Do you do audio separately? Do you do it all on a phone? Do you have a dedicated camera? Well, that's the thing. I just brought my phone. I thought I was just going to take pictures with people, talk to people. Um, Ended up, I got interviewed and and, um, and said a speech. So that took up my time to do what I wanted. But what I did do was just meet a lot of people who either had heard me in other speeches or were meeting me for the very first time. So I handed out cards and talked about what we did and directed people to my website. So you bring a bunch of business cards that have the 2A free free on it? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And also in the interim, I volunteered uh, to do that thing that I was telling Tony about, uh, the Children's Alarm and Shoot. So... um, 
you saw the project, right? My two A or oh, my second dot org. Um, so I went and filmed with him yesterday, and we did uh, my ver my my scene, which is really cool. It's and that's a uh, project. Go ahead and describe that thing that his project is then. And who is he? His pro yeah, his project. He moved to Jersey like two years ago, and and just became pro gun. Oh, he was already pro gun veteran air force and what he's doing is putting together like a montage of different people from different backgrounds saying what you are i am a and for me i'm like i'm a civil rights activist i'm a locksmith i'm you know i'm a christian and he has you say these lines and he's going to put it together with a montage of just different people from different backgrounds and then he has us explain what the second amendment means to us and then he asks another question um what one word answer what is a firearm to you? And and you answer that question for him, and he's just going to put all of that together in a couple of different projects. And then it's like a movie at the end, or is it a series? Or I, is... I think it's a series that he's trying to put out and package and just have out there as an alternative. You know what I mean? That you uh -huh. can put on different sites. So, you know, my, our local Second Amendment group can post stuff up like that. You can see that hey, these are all regular people. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, and I'm pushing that hard. Yeah. It's like, mm -mm. you're going to have people from every background. You're not going to be able to say it's not. And one of the things you say is, we're not the NRA. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're individuals. And I thought that was good because people try to paint you with the whole NRE thing and the NRE screwed their own PR up. So you, you allowed people who don't believe in what you believe in to ruin 150 something years of your history. Um, oh, so one of the things I uh, put on the, theme for today what can we do in 19 to get ready for 20 so are you planning on attending kevin's uh to a media to yeah i, I bought my ticket like yeah. a month i purchased my ticket like a month ago and then uh so that's well, in may right may the end of may yeah may 24th mm -hmm. so yeah. um have you heard about the one in pencil in ohio called the creator summit no. I think that one is sooner. I'd have to go look at I'd put it on Gun Channel's calendar, but um it's a uh, similar, but this is the second year for that one and it's a uh, mm -hmm. YouTuber. I think it's called the Tiven Tyven show. No, okay. No, I've heard the guy say the name. It's like T A T I V A N show. And it sounds like it seems like a guy who's like a gun guy, I guess, and then does live shows or something. I haven't seen his show before, but one of the people that's part of that two a media summit is uh chat a lot in the text chats. So uh he had brought it to our attention. I think that one is uh, interesting too. It's a little different, but it's similar that it's bringing two a media together like off of uh any of like the shot show or MRA show or anything like that. Like yeah. the, yeah. So many people putting together so many things, and it's like, hey, dudes, I only have so much money. <laughs> uh, I might well, have yeah, but not any one person can attend them all, but that's one of the reasons they have more than one, and you know, that happens around great. the country. It's handy. I think that's a great idea, though. I mean, my group of friends and I, you know, I listen to their, I take their input so we can reach multiple people on multiple levels. Um, cause I can't think of everything and I don't think of everything and all these people help me out. <clears throat> so it's like, Hey, this time we need to do this, this, we need to do this. And luckily I'm small enough as in, you know, two, a four E that any changes can be made, can be made before the next event. So, uh, the bad part is again, timetable when you have people helping and not actually paid to do it, that affects the timetable. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They get to it. They get to it when they get to it. Like my T-shirt, my T-shirt guy just came through for me last night with the shirts I asked him about in December. I gave him the print I wanted in January. I got the shirt yesterday. But like you say, like as a favor, like when other runs are done or little league yeah. teams in or something that gets priority. 
Yeah, and and it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> but I really wanted to put these t-shirts out <laughs> during Black History Month because it's like you know this one is Huey P. Newton. Oh, uh, <laughs> and it has well, the time table him. screwed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it has a quote from him, and I had like four different ones that were going to be black people who have made firearms-related quotes that many people may not have heard of. Oh, what do you got? Or is that... Uh, um, no, I don't, I don't give a shit. What's it? Ida B. Hay, uh, Ida B. Wells, the one that said about a Winchester belongs over the fireplace in every black home. Um, I got that from her. I got Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, widow, um, Coretta Scott King, talking about how every civil right has to be fought because it can disappear in one generation. Ronald Reagan had a similar quote, but I think this is better coming from her. Yeah. And uh, there was another one from Frederick Douglass. It might be the one about the ballot box the, and then finally the cartridge box, that one. I think that might be the quote from Frederick Douglass. If that's a Frederick Douglass quote, I text them all to him. But it's like coming at it from a different angle. These are famous black people that you look up to, that, that, that were the ones that showed up during Black History Month in the, even the shittiest schools. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I did. And that's what I want the shirts to say. I think it's important. I think it's important to use just not the same old people the same old white dudes you know give me liberty give me death my cold dead hands not nah, that's that's not going to resonate with some people but an unarmed people are slaves or subject to slavery at any given moment you've heard that one before right uh -huh. which one is that one who's or who oh, said Hugh P. Newton oh okay okay I'm trying to read at the same time I'm talking oh. uh, the one about the cartridge box. I found a thing called Quote Investigator, but it's mm -hmm. too verbose. I can't read it. And there's all kinds of, I guess that's one of the, what do you call it? There's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, oh, origin stories. Oh, yeah. And they're kind of thumbing through them there. So, yeah, I didn't go through it all. Well, let's see. So, um, what about the gun rights policy conference coming up in Phoenix in September? We now know the date it's September twentieth. Yeah, that's not going to happen, man. No, not getting that far. I was hoping it'll be at least down in Florida or something like that. Maybe I could pull that off. Oh, it'll be it'll move again, but yeah, this year. Yeah. I don't know what uh, flying to Phoenix is like. If that's one of those cities that there's lots of flights, or if that's a tough one to get to. Yeah, and, and me, I'm going to be trying to come out of Trenton, New Jersey, instead of Newark, just because I don't want that hassle. If it's better, you know what I mean? Most people don't know Trenton has an airport that flies around the country. So, and I'm talking about people in Jersey that book vacations and flights. So it's not overwhelmed at all. Small airport. Oh, okay. Guy is saying, does anybody... Anybody know if YouTube removes videos from YouTube playlists? Of course, I'm sure they do for all kinds of reasons. Do they on a regular basis for no reason? Not really. I've never experienced it, but I guess I don't monitor all my playlists either. So uh, without any no. more clarification than that, yes, I guess. Um, I don't know. If you are creating a playlist of other people's videos and they remove their own video, then, of course, it's not going to be in your playlist anymore. So I'm not sure what kind of playlist you're talking about either. And then he asks, uh, also for anyone, also for everyone, the time filter is no longer working on YouTube question mark. So I don't know again what that means with the time filter. I don't even know what that means. I don't either. So need more info. See a couple other people out there chatting. Like I said, I sent out links to like 45 people today. Um, mm -hmm. Do open the rooms to talk about 2A media and, uh, you know, provide a, a place so that people can schedule it and, and you know, come and explain something that they've been doing or ask questions. Every once in a while, these things get into, you know, very interesting two-hour conversations, but uh, not always. <laughs> 
Yeah, because uh, we start recording our podcast in an hour and a half, hour and 50, at 9 o'clock. I don't know what time Ghost starts, but yeah, it'll be at some time here. Yeah, so, going to have to bounce on that, but yeah, so it was really cool, man. I really appreciate you guys including me in the whole patch thing. you have any idea what you're going to do with them? I haven't gotten your art back. I've gotten some of the other arts back, but uh, oh, they're going to be tricked see in it. here. All right, let me find my art file because he sent it all to me. Oh, no, no. I already sent it off. I'm saying the art oh. coming back from the oh. factory. Like, the first stuff they'll do is that I send them stuff, and then they take the art and they turn it into their art, right? Like, whatever you send okay. to me, perfect. They have to do whatever they're going to do, whatever the machines or, you know, whatever their machines need to do. So whenever I get that back, you know, then normally you look at it, you make sure it's right, the colors are right or whatever, and then they make an actual version. That's the next step is they make one you know, one rubber one, and then you look at that, and it's like a real picture of that, and then you can actually see what the colors look like, and if everything came out the way you want, uh, so anyway, that's where we're at with the art is starting to trickle back from them, and, you know, we're still waiting for, uh, you know, just in the process right now, but um, I'm asking, uh, have, have you thought about what you're going to do with them, any plans for what to do with them? Somebody planned it for me. Uh, this kid thing I'm volunteering for has 25 children set up. So uh, the guy was like, yeah, you could give your patches to uh, one per kid. Like, <laughs> you motherfucker. Because <laughs> uh, I'm like, what? okay, it's a patch. A kid will probably love any patch. Thank goodness it doesn't have a firearm on it. It says diversity. Uh, mm -hmm. And it says diversity. Shoot, it could be a basketball game, anything. People have no idea what it means. So. I think that might be safe to give to a kid. Uh, and then it's up to their parents what the hell they do to it after that. But yeah, I, I, my conscience is clear. That's why I have it like I do. I'm like, I didn't want, you know, a logo with two crossed AK-47s or something. I, I want a conversation to start in a positive. If you see my, hey, what's that mean? Well, let me tell you. Yeah, and that's sort of the... I guess why it makes them good, right? Is that they can be there for when you need them to have a conversation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and not, you know, you have two rifles on something. Somebody goes, how dare you wear that in here? And now it's like a confrontational hair is up on the back of someone's, you know. <laughs> Thank you. you. Uh, yeah, because I've had a couple of people come at me on LinkedIn talking about my content is inappropriate i got another one today this content is inappropriate you mean you're telling people to take part in a project i was like nah this is my profession it's not inappropriate you just don't agree with it that's interesting i never felt any kind of that kind of stuff on linkedin do you use linkedin a lot uh every day really is it uh one that gets return or are you still exploring it or I'm putting out, I've had some donations come in from LinkedIn, um, questions. I don't know if people purchase things, but I know since I've started continually posting to LinkedIn and the NRA ILA page, um, t-shirt sales, I've had more of those. And it might just be people finding out about me, but I friend people and I keep growing. My network is like 700 and something people now on LinkedIn. Um, Oh, really? So you don't get restricted or filter it to the people like you know personally or anything like that? No, what I did was I started out with people I knew personally, and then I just used their links to contact other people in the industry. And, you know, since I was on NRA TV and since I've had, you know, magazine art article published at USCCA, I reached out to them, too. You know, why not? Yeah. I've been there and I put it down as part of my experience. So now when people in the industry at least read about it, and see, I'm going to be on this podcast, that podcast. I'm like, just let it grow. So when I show up at NRA, people go, oh, yeah, I remember your LinkedIn profile. Also, your Facebook thing. Or yes. I don't care, man. It's exposure, and you can do it in your underwear. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is funny when, like, I got a call from one of the board members, uh, one of the board of directors from the NRA, hey, Tim Knight. And Tim calls me every now and again. Hey, Tony, how's it going? What's going on? 
th- I heard you on so and so show, and it was really awesome because I contact him sometimes when this shit's really kicking my ass. You know, when, when I'm just going, why am I doing this? <laughs> and then I call someone who's done it successfully and recall senators. <laughs> and I'm like, that's why I'm doing this. And uh, I come home and talk to my family about it, and it's like, yeah, what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're yeah. like, oh, and another one of your NRA friends? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, another one. <laughs> 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 they think it's a guy I shoot with or something. I'm like, nah, whatever. It's not that important. And they're like, just take out the garbage. Okay. Well, that's sort of the point, though, and that's the thing, whoever we are, that we want to fill in the blank on the other side of that. They're just taking out the garbage on Thursdays also, you know? they're, they're We're all just regular people. You know, there's a couple of people that are you know, living some other kind of level, but for the most part, everybody out there who's in this game on both sides, really, is just uh, regular people. It's just that we're doing it with an intent because we believe in it. And the other side is getting, you know, a paycheck from Bloomberg to do it, which I think we need to get. Yeah, yeah I, I think it does. I mean, when you feel it's grassroots and then you have a day like today where over 5,000 people said they were coming out, 400 people came out. One part you feel excited about it, and the other part you like. Well, four hundred is fifty more than Arizona had come out. So we only had we only I thought it was two fifty, but I found out it was three fifty, and yeah, so you had more people than we had show up. I don't know what the RSVP in Arizona. I didn't think to ask that. I will try to ask that next time I find somebody who might know, but uh, I doubt it was anywhere near four thousand. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, and that's New Jersey. So that's people mm-hmm. that not only had to go somewhere, but had to potentially face something. Like in Arizona, there's no consequence to going there other than you had to get up, go over there. Nobody's going to yeah. be against you. You know what I mean? Like we can go there and go home and go to the anywhere. Nobody's going to care that we went to a Pro 2A rally. Oh, yeah, dude. I had to make sure my vehicle was emptied out of all spare rounds. I made sure I had no bullets in the car just because I didn't want to be that guy because people don't understand how vindictive the politicians are in Jersey. I mean, you saw what happened with Chris Christie shutting down a bridge in New York uh, just because one Democratic mayor didn't support him in Jersey. He shut down a bridge. Uh, So these guys are bad news. This particular governor had one of his uh, staff members she got raped by another one of his staff members and he swept it under the rug until she finally went public with it. Like he doesn't even care if members of his team get raped. He's not going to stop his agenda. I'm like, yeah, I ain't fucking with that. dude. These are scary people. Hello. Hello. I've got this damn fly here that I'm trying to kill with one of these electric tennis racket things, but also not trying to <laughs> knock everything over in the house. So it's a giant fly. I should be able to kill it. But anyway, uh, um, Tony jumped in. Or is it Tony? Jumped in from Yeah. Canada. How's it going, guys? Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> was using the mini cricket, the little cricket, the precision rifle. I love those photographs you had. Those photographs in the snow were awesome, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, we're trying to uh, trying to just get people excited about it. The kids are going to be using it. Damn, I should have written a date down. In June? June 23rd, I think. That's when the shoot is. We call the varmint shoot. So that's going to be cool. The varmint shoot. Toll. Are you going to have real varmints or fake varmints? Fake farmers. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they have on those. Politicians oh, running around. <laughs> Ooh, was... Oh, they'd lose their ever loving minds. Hmm. Yeah, I wish I was a better photographer. That those are some cool pictures you took. I took a butt ton of them, and that, that, it's like, how, how'd you do that? I take <laughs> a lot of them and throw most of them away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the 23rd, June 23rd, that's when we're doing it. Um, Totally booked. They have over $500 raised in funds. 
Uh, so they're creating swag bags, and, and one of the guys, and the guy volunteered me giving up 25 of my patches. Oh, I heard you saying that. I was trying to get in earlier, and I heard you saying that about someone volunteering your patches. <laughs> yeah, so it is what it is. They're going to do a 50 50 and a silent auction, which is awesome. I've got a, I've got some like like duplicate patches I could send you so that you could give those away instead of your own if you want me to. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. like gun some of the gun channel stuff, like the you know what I mean that I've collected from there. I've got a bunch of duplicates from. Unless you just want. I mean, true. <laughs> hey, that works for me. Anything people give me, I give away. So I'm I'm cool with it. And kids just love free stuff and a chance to shoot a bunch of guns. I mean, this is exciting to me to do this with children, you know what I mean? To get them one of the most fun volunteer things I do every year is the family day for the NRA. And it's, I think we have hundreds of people go through, like my station alone, teaching them how to shoot clays with a shotgun. You know, they hit three or four clays. I show them how to do it. They do it. And the kids just are amazed because, oh, my God, I did that. Yep, you did. This is fun. And then they turn around. How much is one of these? <laughs> and mom and dad are looking to be like, oh, no. I'm like, this is a Stevens. It's like $125 youth model 28. <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, really? Only that? And I'm like, only that. And. I've turned people on to shooting clays from there. They've been really excited and they become members of that range. But for me, it's the kids. And also some of the anti-gun people were people that are afraid of guns, but they came to the event anyway because someone dragged them and then they blow a clay up. And you see their eyes light up. <laughs> it, it is just great. That was one of the first things that got me into the shooting sports when I was a kid. It this sounds like a, a sob story, but it's not really. My father was not re ever around, but I had this guy that was a part of the Big Brother program. He would take me and my brother hunting and fishing and shooting, and he would take us to the uh, our. It's up on Mont Lake Mountain. It was a skeet range, and one of the most fun things that we ever did was go shoot, you know, skeet. And I remember the first time I knocked one out of the sky, I was like, "Dang, that's awesome!" You know. <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> to shoot a moving target that was awesome <laughs> like i can't believe it this is stuff you see on television i was a, like trick shots yeah and i had i still have that 20 gauge that he gave me and it's the one i have a video where i cut the barrel off to 18 and a half inches and i painted it camouflage and it's got a crazy stupid light on it you know that i strapped on with duct tape just fun stuff you know mm -hmm. good stuff yeah, dude. I mean, you never know. Like, reading was one of my gateways into shooting. Like, we had firearms as a kid. I mean, I'm from the South. And um, family events happen. Someone breaks out the, you know, buck mark in a Ruger. And bing, we're, you're plinking. Especially, you know, back in my day where you actually had 10 cans. So you're shooting 10 cans. And then somebody breaks out the 357 Magnum. And then it's on. Um, that's how I grew up. But really what helped me get into it was reading books like the Executioner series, Mac Bolin, those books, or Soldier of Old Soldier of Fortune magazines where you, you know, read the stories about dudes that actually use different firearms and you learned about different and that just like continued that role, that build up, you know. Um, my grandfather, excuse me, my great grandfather was one of the few black combat troops in World War One. Well, so he had he had some stuff he brought back from there, and and that just made it real. That was like sur that's the thing that kicked off surplus, you know. Like my great granddad had this, like he went to war with this. That generation really is the greatest. Well, that, that's just not some tagline, you know. I got to interview Clinton Riddle several times up in Athens, yeah. Tennessee. He's just you talk about an awesome guy, man. World War II vet. He flew, he had like two or three weeks training on a glider. They weren't even considered pilots. They wouldn't even classify them as pilots, the guys who flew the gliders in, right? They would drag their butts up into the air and make them crash land these gliders with Jeeps and crap in them, and people would die just from landing, you know? And they were, they were just, I don't know, awesome people. 
the number of people died just training to be glider pilots would get a program shut down today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not laughing but about them. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying that that's so true. Yeah. It's like the Osprey cost $2 billion program. They're like, you have one more crash, you're shutting this down. That one was freaking plywood, <laughs> plywood and, and burlap. Oh, he, had, he had photographs on the wall of his, of the one, you know, he, he flew in. It's just, it's crazy. You know, it's like a big model airplane, you know, that somehow held a Jeep and some ammo and, and troops. And I don't know, they survived somehow. All right. Well, this is a two-way media workshop, so. Uh, Tony started <laughs> that crap. So. Yeah, it's 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 the concept of interviewing people <laughs> and uh, getting um, stories archived. I mean, that's definitely part of the project, but. I got a question. Um, <clears throat> my two-way, I mean, my program, my podcast, I do. I use Anchor, the podcast app on my phone. It's starting to cut out and just do crappy things. Like I try to do 10 or 15 minute segments, you know, to keep it short. So if you're listening on your ride home, you know what I mean? It can cut off in the middle of a segment. It's easy to start and listen to seven minutes over again, not an hour. Well, it's starting to just kick me off like three minutes. Boom, it kicks you off. Another three minutes, it kicks you off. So I'm looking for something like how you guys record or what you use to record. That's what I'm working on now. I, I might just record the entire thing and then post it up using Anchor because this is getting really frustrating. You have to record them live? Well, it's just like a phone call. It's live, it gets recorded, and then I use that to post the uh, the thing, nope. you know, and send it out. What I'm saying is you can't use some software like OBS and then upload it to a... Yes. Like yeah, so it's not live it. so that you can edit it? Yeah, yeah I... I I have to learn all that <laughs> like i found this app i had a guy who was doing my recordings and we would record through him and he would post it up well he got promoted and went about his business and we my partner found this he found anchor and said hey we can record while i'm driving home because he has a job that keeps him on the road so we record while he's driving home and we post the entire thing up now they're getting the tech is immature, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, it's not mature enough to keep us on or stuff happens. I thought that they so, went from 15 to longer. Are they going back to 15 or something? I don't know because I'm talking like three minutes. And it oh, okay. Running. So you're talking more technical than like a... Yeah. Like a okay. Yeah, more tech. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, your internet works. Otherwise, if you went someplace else, you wouldn't have connective issues. Yeah, I'm not seeing a connective issue. It just drops off. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the frig? Well, you know, open like broadcaster. It? Open broadcaster is an open source. You know, it's free. You could you could for your phone. Yeah, is because it for a phone? Uh, open broadcaster. You could just use it on your computer. You don't, you don't have to. He's talking about on a phone while they're driving. They're connecting while they're both driving on a phone app that's called Anchor. Okay. Yeah. Not I'm, saying, I'm saying you don't have to do your podcast that way. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, maybe I can do something else. Uh, when he's home, uh, I'm thinking about using something like Hangouts or uh, I have this thing called Zoom on now. I don't know how it works, but I'm going to figure it out. Because... Look, you want to listen to a show. You don't want it to continually cut out in the middle of sentences and things like that. It gets frustrating as a listener. It's yeah, like, I mean, no, especially if it doesn't splice them together or, like, sew it together. The experience yeah. is pretty shitty. Yeah, people won't stick around, I suppose. Yeah, who wants to hear that? But I have no experience with making things fancy, so um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think any of the people that are on gun channels... Uh, record mobile so the one guy brandon um i'm not much sure what name he's going by or if he's actually active right now but he'll he's active intermittently throughout the years he was probably around gun channels when it first started up even and he's an active contributor to gun channels uh, but he's not frequent he's not and he's intermittent but um he's out of scottsdale and he's done um some podcasting with anchor so next time he's around i'll certainly ask him but uh 
I don't know. It would be definitely, I think it'd be advantageous to have more people that uh, podcast from mobile uh, situations like that because uh, when you go to events and things, uh, being stuck with knowledge of home computer app, you know, ways doesn't really give you much experience doing the mobile stuff. Um, there's a two girls called Not Your Average Girl podcast or something. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, is it at not your average girl? Or um, not your average shooter? I don't know what I don't remember what it's called. It's not your average something podcast, yeah. and it's two girls. And yeah, uh, cool. I know when they were at at the AmCon, their talk was about podcasting and things. So I don't know if you know them though, they might give you some leads because they seem real savvy with the phone stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, Amy uh, actually just. Got back to me on LinkedIn, <laughs> and, uh, Amy uh, Robbins. She's, okay, she's cool. one of them. So yeah, I guess I can uh, contact her. She has a clothing line now, uh, mm -hmm. concealed carry women's clothing line. Yeah, they do the uh, CCW, or I guess they call it a CCW, CCW uh, fashion show, concealed carry fashion show, or something like that. Oh, I think that's Amanda Suffolk. She does that too. Oh, that's not them all together. No, that's not them. Oh, okay. But I think they probably work together. If they don't, they should. <laughs> I just maybe assumed because they do all the fashion stuff or whatever. They were talking a lot about fashion at Amcon. Yeah, actually, Amy worked in the fashion industry. I'm not sure if she was a model or not. She could be. I mean, she's really tall and attractive. And she has that poise. So she might have been. <clears throat> but I've listened to her. A lot of people and... mistake me for a model because of the same attributes, but I have to come by like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it ain't easy. Yeah, I was just going to call, you know, racism on that I'm short and fat and I can't get a modeling job. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you, you, it's a fetish website you have to look for if you want. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's definitely so we got woods jumping in here um any other two-way media stuff that you jumped in to talk, chat about um i Jen. i was just going to ask both the guys because I, I follow both of them um just from like the regular joe kind of not content creator but is there uh is there platforms that i should check out that i'm not aware of that um i could help you guys you know like when some of us watch things on GunStreamer, that helps GunStreamer, but like a lot of times the same videos are places. I guess my question is, is how many different platforms are you all on? I'm just on, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook is, you know, the second is for everyone. On Instagram, I'm Simon Says Train. On here, I'm Simon Says Train. <clears throat> um, if you listen to the podcast, the 2A4E podcast, let me give a rundown. iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, not to be confused with Google Play. I didn't know there were two different things. And some of the other podcast apps you can check me out on, including Spreaker. Is there one that helps more than the other one for us to watch you on that platform rather than another one? Not at this time. I don't see a difference in between them at all. And I haven't monetized any of them because I figure the amount of plays they want you to do and then throw an advertisement in for them, none of them have been that great for me to actually advertise for them. So I'd rather just go to companies that have helped me out, like High Point, like uh, Henry. Those people have actually donated guns to us, you know what I mean? Like Matador Arms out of Canada has donated parts to us and they've supported us, you know, other ways technically behind the scenes. So I'd rather work with them as sponsors than sponsor something in the hope of people will listen to Anchor more because I did an Anchor advertisement and they give me 10 cent per number of people who listen. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like you guys were playing uh, Shotgun with Charlie earlier, and I've been trying to make a point of watching all the videos and then commenting on them and just trying to get the algorithm to put it in front of more people. Does that help at all? Or yeah, that's my understanding of it. Actually, yeah, it does. Actually, Charlie just posted something about his numbers being up. So that's probably you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he actually posted that, that his numbers are up starting this year. 
So that's pretty cool. So it shows up somewhere and people do appreciate it. Yeah, that's what it's all about when you post people's stuff and you link to it and then it starts to, it doesn't, it's not like magic. If it was magic, then all people would have to do is do it. But if you consistently do it, you're going to be, you know, that, that, uh, what is the word? It, 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 it accumulates. Uh, yeah, uh, you get momentum. And uh, eventually what you create is like roots, like that, you know, to hold up a big tree or something. Like you, you, you end up creating a, a network that's very strong, very useful. And yeah, as you do it, your reputation on the platform, when they when they wait, somebody's got feedback, so nobody's muting. You're all being bad at being guests. So uh, um, when you're using the platforms, we don't talk about this enough either. When you use the platforms, I'm, I'm assuming most of the platforms are at least aware of this, and it, to various degrees they're incorporating this. But as you use the platform, you'll get reputation. So as you go to... Google Maps and you leave comments, or as you go to Amazon and you leave comments, as you go to eBay and you leave comments, you get reputation scores and feedback scores and stuff. People that participate in the platforms rank higher. Their their review is worth more than someone who the platform doesn't know from, from nobody because they're just brand new to the platform or maybe even an anonymous review. You know, it has to weigh those reviews. So once you participate in all these different platforms, uh, helping to move people around, you're you're becoming a more major player on those platforms. And when the flyby nights come in and say, "Oh, we've been told to wear a red shirt and hate on this issue today," you know their actions and their uses of the platforms are going to denote their spammy habits and their spammy actions. But if you're out there literally using the platform the way the what platform is designed to be used. Ideally, if enough of us are doing it with that, uh, that uh, idea, then you're becoming more and more useful uh, entities on these platforms, too. That was one of the things we talked about a lot um, at some of my events. Uh, it's like, you want to be part of the community? Just show up consistently, regardless of what it is. And, and all of a sudden, you're part of it. And you can be a positive or a negative as we see some people just run around being trolls like it's a profession. But yeah, man, I mean, people start recognizing you and you're helping. So thanks. I have a question for PNW Woods. Okay, go ahead. Do you, um, do you just watch or do you create content also? Um, I don't really create content, but uh, I probably should get off my ass and do more of that. But I try to just be supportive of everybody else and, uh, you know, by financially. And then I also, when I watch a video, I make sure that I make a comment because of what we just talked about that, you know, that I believe that helps over time. Oh, I wasn't being critical. I just want, I was curious to see about, you know, what kind of channel you had or, you know, where, where you were located on social media. Well, I mean, it's like, every, I guess we could talk about like trying to balance, you know, family and, you know, life and everything and 2A and all that. Um, I just haven't found a balance point yet to try to do any more content. Um, G to webs is nice enough to let me go on the daily gun show once in a while, but, uh, that's about it. And then I've gone I'm on other people's chats here on gun channel sometimes, but that's cool. I'm kind of like a, a reserve outfielder. Like I'll, I'll go on if the, nobody else is there, but you know, no, I was just wondering where we could check out. You know what I mean? If you had places we could go check out ourselves and, you know what I mean, support you. Yeah. It's not like we wear, like, a hello, my name is, and then it has, like, some kind of UPC code where we can, like, go, oh, okay, yet, right? Like, eventually, we're going to walk up to somebody and we'll know, like, oh, look at this guy. He's like got some halo of, like, little icons. Like, this guy's all over the web, and then, like, some old guy will walk up and have, like, rusty old AOL icon floating above him or something. <laughs> Yes, that's what somebody said about one of uh, friend Dan said about the diversity shoots. Give everybody a, a name tag, but have their profile picture from Facebook uh, as their name tag. That way I know who it is. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, that's the dude that has the Harambe uh, as his profile picture. <laughs> awesome. Love that guy's content. Am I Corkin Ghost or is he about to go live? 
I don't know what time it is anymore. Anyway. I think he's going live in about 15 minutes. Okay, so I guess we're going to wrap it up so we don't cork them. Um, so the two-way workshop is every Tuesday, every Saturday. Send out links to people I know that are in the two-way media from different platforms, different, what's the word, uh, um, different uh, domains. I don't know what to call it. Uh, so uh, there's authors, there's uh, people that have uh, written for periodicals, uh, people that uh, go do boots on the ground, like I say, I like to call it, like what Tony from New Jersey is doing with his workshops every other week. Uh, and uh, we have this room available for a couple hours every Tuesday and then every Saturday. And uh, the idea is that we can mobilize and work more effectively as two-way media. We also are, everything I do online is to encourage you that you're voice is valid and the more and more people I meet in the media um, more and more determined that we're all just regular people there are no heroes nobody's wearing capes nobody's funded by anything uh, so everybody's got the same tools we've got cameras and uh, microphones and keyboards in our phones uh, we have powerful tools with social media and the various pro gun platforms that are out there including gunchannels.com guntube.org gunstreamer and the others that are out there uh, giving us a place to archive and, and keep our two-way media. And, uh, and again, we're, all our voices are valid as the uh, internet grows. Uh, contribute to that growth with a two-way message. I want to close with uh, saying thanks to Tony, both Tonys, Gary for jumping in, Woods for joining us. Uh, and let's talk about Patriot in the Dark, uh, Gun Channel's member from Michigan who's got a, a project going now, the uh, I'm never going to get the thing right. The uh, Liberty, oh, is he, is it the Open Liberty? No, Defend Liberty Challenge, Defend, Defend the Liberty Project. So anyway, name doesn't matter. The concept is think locally. Think about the, uh, the situations or the political uh, things that are ch um, challenging you locally and uh, do something to uh, describe those with a liberty point of view as opposed to just a two, uh, two a point of view always uh, and then present that online and then uh, in a way that you can then uh, present it to people in real life uh, that's the that's the challenge that's the project actually do something locally to make people aware of the attacks on our liberty which is what these are I mean we obviously are focused on Second Amendment but these are attacks on our rights and the government's ability to uh, infringe on more than just the Second Amendment. And if we want to bring more and more allies to the uh, defense of that liberty, then let's get the message out there. I think it's a valid project uh, and uh, a, good, a valid challenge. So uh, once you've uh, collected whatever is uh, affecting you specifically locally and presented that, uh, we encourage you to post that on Every Second Matters. We have places there that are uh, divided up by states. So you have a place to put it that's uh, applicable uh, and then look broader and either go to your state level or your regional level and, and repeat the process. And if and think about it, if 50 people took up the challenge and did that, we'd have an accumulation of info from 50 different states. I'm guessing you have 50 people in each state. So, um, you know, there's lots of ways that just a few people who want to take up one of these challenges uh, can contribute and affect some, some change out there and some uh, competent, useful data to challenge some of the emotional lies that we saw today in Ghost Chat. So we encourage everybody to head over to gunchannels.com and check out the Ghost Tactical Show. Uh, later on today, Night Strike will be doing his show. Occasionally, Big Gunner 81 will post his shows over on Gun Channels. Uh, uh, Outlaw does his shows yesterday. We'll have the Daily Gun Show tonight. And uh, stay tuned for more stuff on Wednesdays pretty much every night over on Gun Channels. There's live conversations about for Second Amendment and guns. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks.